Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. My name is Josh Moore, and I'm the pastor of the Red Door Church. I'm so happy that you've tuned in to listen to what uh, the Lord has to say to us today. Um, so if, uh, if you're there, if you've got your kids, gather them around or go get them and let them know that uh, we're getting started here. And I'm going to open us up with the word of prayer. But before I do that, I want to ask, maybe there's some kids watching this right now. And I want to ask them if they know what today is. Today is a special day. It's a, it's a national holiday. Do you know what today is? Today is what we call Memorial Day. And do you know what Memorial Day is all about? Well, on Memorial Day, we remember all those very brave men and women who fought for our country and died in battle. Um, and we remember them today and we honor them and we keep them in our thoughts and our prayers um, I mean, not the people that have died, but their families, their relatives, those that are close to them, right? So today's a very important day, but for a lot of people, it's a very sad day. So it's good for you to pray for all those people that have lost a mommy or a daddy, or maybe it's a husband or a wife or, or a neighbor or an aunt or uncle or someone, or maybe it's a niece or nephew, a son or daughter, um, Maybe today is a very sad day for a lot of people. So we're going to start by saying a prayer for all those people, okay? And we're also going to pray for our little time here together. So let's pray, okay? Oh God, we thank you so much that we can be together during this scary time with this virus going around. We're thankful that we can still be together in this way and we can learn about you so God, we pray that you would please be with us now and teach us more about yourself, about who you are and what you've done. And God, we also pray for all those people right now that are missing someone who died when they were fighting. Uh, God, they were fighting to protect our freedom and for the things that they really believed in. And, and God, it's really sad uh, when people have to go to war and when sometimes when they die. God, that's really sad. And so many people are missing loved ones today. And so we remember them in our prayers. And we pray that you would comfort them and be really close to them right now. Thank you that you hear our prayers. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks for praying for uh, with me, guys. And remember to keep all those folks in your prayers throughout the day today, okay? Well, today we've got some really uh, neat stuff to look at. A really interesting story in the Bible that we're going to look at together. And before we do that, I want to, to ask you, what did we talk about last week? Do you remember what we talked about last week? Well, last week we talked a little bit about how we can get to know Jesus, right? That's what we talked about. We said that if we want to know God, we need to know Jesus. Because Jesus spoke the words of God and he did um, acts of God, and he uh, claimed to be God. And we believe, of course, those of us who follow Jesus believe that he was God, that he came down and became a person like us, but that he was still God somehow. It was really amazing and mysterious kind of thing. But if we want to know God, we get to know Jesus. And then last week we talked about how to get to know Jesus. One of the ways, one important way, is by reading the Bible, Right? And in the Bible, we hear all about who Jesus was and what he did and what he said and taught. And, and most importantly, we hear about his death on the cross. And we've talked a little bit about that in previous weeks. And we'll keep talking about that as we uh, do more of these times together. But one important way to know Jesus is to read your Bible, right? And we talked about that last week. Well, in the Bible, when you're spending time in the Bible... Um, I know many of you may not be able to read, but maybe your mom or your dad or your, your aunt or uncle or grandmom or granddaddy or someone close to you or maybe a big brother or sister, uh, maybe they can read to you and they can help you to listen to the Bible. Uh, well, when you, when you are listening to the Bible, when you're reading the Bible, you're going to hear a lot about this thing called the kingdom of God. 
right? Especially Jesus. Jesus is going to talk a whole lot about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is something really special in the Bible. And it's not something that you can see with your eyes. It's not like a kingdom of this world. It's a different kind of kingdom. And Jesus talks a lot about it in the Bible. And one of the ways that he talks about it is through these things called parables. Do any of you guys know what a parable is? What's a parable? Well, a parable is, it's a story, right? Jesus told lots of stories. He would um, come up with a story that would kind of help people to understand um, a deeper truth or something about God or something about uh, something that had happened or something that he did or, or was going to do. And he told them all the time, all over the Bible, Jesus is telling parables. And in fact, Matthew says that when Jesus was out talking to the people in the streets teaching or when he was on the shore at the Sea of Galilee and teaching, G uh, Matthew says that Jesus never taught without using parables uh, when he was teaching to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the masses, to the groups that would come to listen to him. He said, Matthew said he said nothing to them without a parable. So Jesus spoke so much um, so many parables that Matthew says he was doing it all the time when he was teaching. So these were a big part of Jesus' teaching were these parables. And the Gospels are filled with parables. So when you're listening to your big brother or sister or your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa uh, read you some of these stories, you're going to hear these things called parables, these little stories. And do you remember one of the parables that we've talked about? We've talked about a parable in our little times together here on Monday mornings. Um, do you remember one of the ones that we talked about together? Would have been a couple of weeks ago. That picture right there might help a little bit. Can you see the picture okay? That's, I guess, supposed to be Jesus, uh, like a shepherd with his, with his crook and with the little sheep gathered around him. That's a hint, right? So we talked about uh, that parable, that story, when Jesus said he was the good shepherd. You remember that? When Jesus said he was the good shepherd who cares for the sheep and takes care of them and feeds them and loves them and leads them beside the, the, into the green pastures and beside the still waters. That was a parable. That was one example. So we've already talked about uh, one parable, at least in our time together on Monday mornings. Well, today we're going to talk about another parable, a really important one, one that's always been very special to me, and I hope it's special to you. And it's called the parable of the hidden treasure, right? And it's, it's really, really short. It's just one verse uh, in the Bible, one verse. Jesus sometimes told long parables, like the, the parable of the, of the prodigal son, the longer one. Um, or sometimes he told little short ones like this one, which is just one, one verse. And I'm going to read that verse for you. It's uh, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, is where we can find that parable. And I'm just going to read it for us right here. I've got my Bible with me. And I hope you've got a Bible. And like I said, I think it was last time. If you need a Bible, if you don't have one and you'd really like one, please let me know. You can... Uh, Put a little note in the comments under this or have your mom or dad or, or someone put a note in the comments there and I'd be happy to send you a Bible if you need one, okay? So you let me know. Or if, uh, or if you know how to use a computer, some of you little ones might be getting used to being on the computer a little bit. You can find them on the computer too. All right, so Matthew 13, verse uh, 44, it says this, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys that field. Wow, right? That's special, huh? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Well, what would you do if you found a treasure? If you were out in your yard playing one day and you saw the, a corner of a box sticking up out of the yard and you went and, and uh, dug it all up and it was a treasure, what would you do? That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? That would be really amazing, right? We're doing a lot of uh, 
digging up at our house right now. We're building a big garden and I've actually tried to build this greenhouse and it's a lot of digging and getting in the ground and, and digging stuff up. And I've found all kinds of little treasures, little small things out in the yard, you know, pieces of glass and found little animal bones. I guess someone maybe back a long time ago was a farmer up on the little place where I live. So it's little animal bones and all kinds of stuff up there. And uh, I hadn't found any treasure yet, but how amazing would that be to find a treasure in your, in your yard or out in a field some, uh, somewhere? What would you do if you found it? Right, you'd probably be really amazed and filled with excitement and joy, right? And that's what this parable says that this person was. He found this treasure in a field. And maybe the person who buried it, the, the person who owned the treasure, uh, died a long time ago and, and never came and got it or whatever, but he finds it there and he's really excited. So what's the point of this parable? Jesus told, told parables uh, to teach us something. And what is Jesus trying to teach us with this parable, do you think? I mean, you can see right here. The point of this parable is to teach you and me about how valuable the kingdom of God is, right? That's the point. So what does the man do when he finds the treasure? What does he do, right? He goes and he, what's he do? In his joy, he goes and sells all that he has so that he can buy that field and have the treasure, right? So he puts on a big yard sale, right? You, your uh, family ever put on a yard sale and, and sold, uh, all, you know, not all your stuff, but maybe a bunch of your stuff, or maybe you're getting ready to move and, and, you, and you have a big sale so that you can have less to move with? Well, that's what we did when we moved up here. We had a bunch of yard sales, actually, to try and get rid of stuff so that we can we could come to Vermont. Well, that's what this man does. He's so excited about this treasure. He wants it so much. That, and it's very expensive, right? This is a nice treasure. And or the, the field that it's in, he's got to buy the whole field and everything. And so it cost him something. So he had to sell everything that he has. He maybe sold his clothes and his TV. Now they didn't have TVs back then. <laughs> but Maybe he sold a bunch of stuff. Maybe he was a woodworker and sold a bunch of special wood projects. Or maybe he sold his house and sold it all. It says that he sold all that he has. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? But the man was so joyful that he had found this treasure. He sold it all so that he could buy that field and have the treasure. Now, what does that say about this treasure? What's it say? It says that the treasure is more special, right? than all that the man had. Everything he had didn't add up to the value of having that treasure. So he sold it all. And Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like that. He says, the kingdom of heaven is so special that it's worth giving up everything to have. And that's what the man did. That's why he sold all his stuff, right? So that he could have that treasure. Well, there's two important things to think about in this story that I want to leave you with, okay? So I'm just going to give you two little things to think about as, as, uh, as we go our separate ways here in just a few moments, okay? Maybe you can talk with your mom or dad or your grandmommy or granddaddy about these things or just think about them a little bit, okay? But they're really important to think about, okay? And the first one is this, is that not everyone finds the treasure, right? Because it's hidden, the treasure is hidden. So this man, it was very special that he found the treasure, right? Not everyone found it. Not everyone knew it was there. It appears from this parable that only he knew about the treasure, right? Well, what does that say? What does that say to us about this man? It says that he was very special, right? And that it was a privilege for him to find it. It was a blessing to find the treasure because not everyone finds it. It's hidden. So that's the first thing to think about is, is that if, if you find this treasure, which is the kingdom of heaven, then it's very special. You are very, very special. And, it, and you've received a very special privilege, okay, like a gift. Okay? Not everyone gets gifts, especially not really nice gifts. Okay? But some people do, and those people are extra special. And the kingdom of heaven is like that. So if you're listening to this message, 
you know the way to the hidden treasure because I've told you. I've told you the way many times in these few little sessions that we've had together to find this treasure. What's the way? The treasure is the kingdom of heaven. And who's the king of the kingdom of heaven? Jesus, right? God. And so if we want to know God, we get to know Jesus because Jesus is the way to the kingdom of heaven, right? So I've told you how to get there. You have the map, so to speak, right? Remember we talked about last week about how to know God and know Jesus more is to read the Bible. Well, that's kind of like the map. It tells us all about the kingdom of heaven and all about how to get this treasure. Okay, so if you're hearing this message or if you've heard previous messages, then you have received a very special thing, a special privilege, because you know where that field is, where the treasure is. Okay, and that's special. So that's the first thing to think about is how special it is to hear about the treasure and, and to have the opportunity to receive it. All right, that's the first thing. And here's the second thing to think about that I want to leave you with, okay? Is that it's a challenge, right? It's a challenge. Why is it a challenge to to know where this treasure is or to have found this treasure? What did the man have to do, right? What did the man do in order to have the treasure? Well, he had to he had to give up some things, right? He didn't just go and steal it out of the ground. That wouldn't be right. No, in order to have the treasure in the field, he had to give some things up, right? It cost him something. In fact, this man, it cost him everything, right? He had to give up everything so that he could have the money to buy that field. And the kingdom of heaven is like that. We don't buy the kingdom of heaven. We don't buy the kingdom of God. We can't buy our way into, into heaven. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is that it's very, very valuable and, and that we have to give up some things in order to have it is what this parable is saying. So this man sold all his stuff, right? It cost him something. But do you think it was worth it? Of course it was worth it because the treasure's value is greater than anything else in the whole world, okay? And so what might you have to give up to have this treasure and to follow God? I can't answer that question for you, but, but I know there will be something. Sometimes following God comes at a big cost. Sometimes it means that maybe there's some people that won't like us. Or maybe there's some things in our lives that we really like to do that aren't good that we'll have to give up to follow God, right? Like being selfish. Oh, how we like to be selfish, right? I like to have everything to myself, right? I want, um, you know, I want the biggest slice of pizza when the pizza comes, and I want the, the biggest scoop of ice cream, and I always want to ride in the front seat, and... Uh, follow God, he starts to teach us about putting others first, right? And, and loving others, okay? And, and giving to others. And, but that costs us something, right? So I have to give up that big slice of pizza so that I can bless somebody else. And I can say, I want you to have that. You know, I want you to have the biggest scoop of ice cream, right? Those are the kinds of things we begin to do when we follow God. But sometimes that's hard, isn't it? It's very hard. And so, um, so following God comes with the cost, but as mm -hmm. I just said in, that, in this last slide here, it's worth it because knowing him and being in relationship with him and doing what he says that we should do is better than anything else in the whole world. Having that treasure in the field, knowing God, being a part of his kingdom, there's nothing greater, nothing greater. And so it's worth whatever God would ask us to give up, to have it. So anyways, I wanted to share that with you today. So remember those two, those two uh, challenges, okay? Or those two thoughts right there at the end is that it's a privilege. If you're hearing this message and you know how to get to the treasure, which is through Jesus, you've received a very special privilege and blessing. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is that it's a challenge. We've got to give up things in order to have the treasure. Okay, so I want you to think about to meditate on these things and maybe talk about with, with your, uh, your family, your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, 
or with a friend and uh, ask them if they know about this treasure that, that is the kingdom of God and walking with God. Um, so I'm going to pray for you now, and, uh, and then I hope to see you next Monday. Okay, so let's pray. God, I pray for all those who heard this little message here that, uh, that they would uh, be able to understand what I'm trying to say. Sometimes these things are really hard to explain, and that's why Jesus used parables. And I know that's why he told stories. And so I thank you for stories like this one about the man who found the treasure in the field. And, uh, and God, I pray that we would learn some things from it. I pray for these little ones that they would, they would find that treasure and that they would be willing to give up whatever you would ask them to so that they could have it. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that uh, you have revealed God to us and that you love us so much. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, thanks for joining me, guys. Y'all take care.